However, I would like to invite all of us into a fantasy world. And maybe when this video is released, a picture of President Obama will come up on the screen for an illusory effect. We'll picture a nation of Islam Obama and a meeting of different terrorist factions in the Middle East. Look, some people think that we only need to uh, target suicide bombings at Shia. Other people think that Sunnis who aren't on the righteous path should be a victim of suicide bombings as well. But look, we can all agree that we need to have more suicide bombings. We can all get together behind a common goal of restoring the caliphate. And if we don't listen to each other, then the infidels and the great Satan are going to beat us. We need to take a pause uh, and think more about our commonalities. Aloha. How you doing, devils? This is Barack Hussein Obama. I just wanted to call and congratulate uh, uh, Michael Brooks, uh, Michael Jamal Brooks, Matt Leck, David Slavik, David Grisham. You classed your first 1,000 patrons on Patreon. I knew that investing in you devils was the right call. There is a place that you can find for yourselves in the new Nubian Mecca we're constructing, just as long as you remember your rightful positions. Now, uh, I've told you the secret plan, and uh, I think you're all uh, familiar. Uh, other things you should know. Bill Cosby, innocent. Louis Farrakhan, secret Jew. We're going to add him. And uh, Donald Trump, not part of the plan, but pretty fucking funny. So anyways, I want to congratulate everybody. Uh, thank you. I look forward to more uh, uh, degrading of the white man and various uh, socialist schemes that come out of your Brooklyn delusions before we create the next divine mecca. And stay away from our women. I'm just saying, devil, enjoy yourselves. Until that moment, a lot luck for Well, uh, let me be clear. You know, the white race doesn't disappear overnight. <laughs> but if you look <laughs> at the, uh, the longer trends, uh, white mortality increasing, fewer white babies uh, uh, being born. Uh, look, 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 the, the devil isn't thrown back into a cave overnight. <laughs> the arc of history is long, but it bends toward Sharia. <laughs> so you do like, like just Obama is that dude, except it's all like. You have these uh, bitter people in hip hop uh, <laughs> clinging to their gay mafia to try to silence people like Lord Jamar. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what Brother Jamar say is that when uh, 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 the gay Arati got into the hip hop game, see, 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 a lot of these brothers, they're on the down low. <laughs> and. <laughs> They come out, and they talk like they run the game. Meanwhile, I know for a fact that he sucked Elton John's dick. <laughs> so it becomes kind of uh, difficult to take them seriously as artists. Let me be clear. <laughs> there was a, a gay rapper that flowed. I would give him props. But there just has never been one, and there will never be one, I fear. Uh, look. Uh, can a gay uh, rapper flow? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no. I haven't been this deflated in ages. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> I pride myself, and by the way, this is why this is being released as a podcast, not for my normal WB show. I've prided myself on never trusting the white devil ever. And that includes his films, his TV networks, we all know why Bill Cosby got caught up in all those charges. He was going to buy NBC. But I let myself fall into the devil's game and get excited about Black Panther. Only to discover that Black Panther is a little Bill Cosby, pull your pants up, bitch! Doesn't want to do a goddamn thing about international revolution for the black man and then kill mongers the motherfucking villain! It's bullshit. I haven't been able to get out of bed for a week. I still have my Black Panther costume, but I, I, I don't I don't know whether to wear it or burn it. Hashtag Killmonger was right. 
That's what I was trying to do. We'll keep fighting. But you won this one, devil. You won this one, honky. Black Panther's ruined. A lot of walk for. Uh, uh, good to be with you, Sam. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, look, uh, look. Here's what we're doing with regard to uh, guns. We're mm -hmm. we're imposing a series of uh, uh, sensible measures that everyone can uh, get behind. Greater uh, scrutiny, background checks, greater accountability on the system. I I think that there's no reason why reasonable people across the divide can't all agree with this. Psych. <laughs> I'm sorry, psych. Uh, psych. You hear that beautiful music in the background, Sam? I do. You hear that gorgeous call to prayer mm -hmm. of my faith, the Islamic faith, the one and truly only faith of God, the one and truly only faith of Allah? Here's what I'm really doing with the guns. Yeah. White people, I'm about to take all your guns. I'm coming for you. The fruit of Islam is ready. We're locked and loaded and ready to bear, baby. <laughs> no more guns. White people are going to have to pray to the only true and living God, the black God of Allah, and bow ties for everybody. You ready for this? Oh, so everybody's got to wear bow ties. And are you saying that um, basically you're outlying guns, but just for white people? Just for white people. See, that's what people got it twisted. Remember I said I respect gun laws? I'm going to over-respect gun laws when it comes to black people. I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's tiered systems. Arabs and black people get a lot of guns. Iranian people get the most guns because Iran, obviously, favorite right. country of the world. Uh, Hispanic people are sort of in the middle, so they'll get some. Uh, and then there's a tier system within the Hispanic. Mexicans, more guns. Puerto Ricans, more guns. Cubans, less guns. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh, white people, you don't want a grand total of how many guns you get? Uh, yeah. Zero. Zero guns. You got nothing. <laughs> For white people. All it's right. just the, the greatest joy of my life to watch those pale, disgusting, pasty faces fall and to complete and utter desolate sadness as I take away not only their guns, but their culture and their hopes and dreams. I hate the white man. He's of the devil. He was made in a cave in the worst parts of Europe, produced from the lowest forms of humanity, and I'm so glad to bring him back to his proper state, enslaved to now, the black man. Now, hold on for one second. Well, hold on. No, stop, stop the music. Let me just Don't ask stop this. that me, music. Hold, I'm president of baby. Hold on. What? Let me All just right. ask. Can you really do that via executive action? Uh, I can do that via uh, super Islamo action, which is something you don't even know about. I didn't realize that. I didn't know. That Every time I division. make a public signing statement, there is a secret Quran on the podium. Oh. And that is Allah's law, which supersedes our law. I mean, really, to be honest with you, it's really Iranian law. <laughs> Full on Iranian law. Right? Yeah. You know, the irony is, is that Donald Trump's right. We did negotiate a bad deal with the Iranians from your perspective. I see. From my perspective, it's fantastic. So basically, uh, part of that the whole nuke thing was that we now follow Iranian law. Where's Salman Rushdie at? <laughs> Someone needs to get, <laughs> Someone needs to pay the price for blasphemy around here. All right, let's final see. year, psych. Just getting started. Sultan up in these, baby. Okay, well, we're all right. Head well, to the phones. Akbar. Yes, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Watch the Bulls game. It's like having sex with your best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Suck each other's dicks. Watch the game. Those ones, <laughs> those ones, and the and the Muslim ones are really funny because right. he's like he's is the most boring technocrat guy. Right. And like right. stickler for details. <laughs> Hillary's very process oriented. <laughs> I'm like, can we start beheading it. people already? And she's like, no, no, no. We need to file the IRS. We need to go through a proper process. It's the only way to get funded. We're sitting there. We're just spitballing. I'm like, look, what if we thought beyond terrorism? What if we had our own caliphate? There you go. It wow. was at an Aspen Ideas Festival. <laughs> I was sitting there with Hillary Clinton, David Gergen. He still shows up a lot. Brilliant guy. CNN leadership analyst. So wait a second. Ariana are you saying, Huffington. Are you had, saying that Gergen was also part of the David party? Gergen and Ariana Huffington designed a sleep program for all of our beheaders. And uh, we were really able to innovate. I, I iterate. I, isn't that what you're doing? I well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to disrupt the terrorism sector. <laughs> so what we said is, what if the answer is in geography? We thought we were in a post-geographic world. What if we reinvented it? We could create an Uber of Yazidi genocide. <laughs> so and we did a fantastic job. Did a great job. That's yeah, true. There you go. Big the time. How ISIS Obama, is big league. How Obama founded ISIS revealed. 
All right, look, Joe, uh, you're one of the good ones, okay? <laughs> Let me just say that right up front, all right? So I tolerate you, and uh, Hillary's not going to be president. None of these Republicans are going to be president. We all know the long-term master plan. I guess you don't because you're sort of like the help around here. But uh, let me explain to you how it's going to work. One term for you. You get to run around, obviously. Uh, me and uh, Skip Gates and Cornell West will still control things behind the scenes. <laughs> Two years in, Minister Farrakhan's on the Supreme Court. Don't, exp- don't, don't ask me how that's going to happen. It's just going to happen. All right? Then... He named Deval Patrick, or as I remember him, Kwame, my classmate, <laughs> at Kinshasa Grammar School. That's right. That's in the Congo. People don't even know this. It goes so deep. <laughs> so that's the plan. Can you get on board with that, Whitey? And uh, there Allah you have Akbar. It. All right. So Say it after me, Joe. <laughs> Allah Akbar. Uh, Mark, uh, you, you know as well as I do that I, I tend to try to leave the devil's business to his own if you all want to kill each other over Facebook, that's fine. It's my job to teach the black man his true nature and keep him off of that platform and get him onto world star, baby, world star. But look, you and I both know that white people are very gullible and uh, and stupid. So I was very troubled uh, to find that you had said, with regards to fake news, which is why we have, of course, the true devil that you're afraid of, I don't care about, Trump can be president of for all you white people, for all day, for all I care. But I know you're scared about it. You want a Hillary. But yet you said just the other day in the paper that the idea that fake news was part of the election, fake news on Facebook, was crazy. What the fuck do you mean by that, Mark? I go over there and slap you upside the head? In retrospect, uh, you know, we are trying to manage this issue. That wasn't the best way for me to put it. But, you know, uh, we're trying to simultaneously give people a voice and, and also you know, make people heard. Yeah, give give people a voice. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, Mark. Look, look, Mark. Let me explain something to you. If a black man who has been historically disenfranchised believes that the AIDS was created by the CIA, what what do you call that, Mark? Uh, I, I I have not come across the that. truth because it was created by the motherfucking CIA and the white man. Now, white devils. What do they do all day during election season? They send around memes with fake quotes by popes around about sex at pizza parlors and some true ones about my Islamic faith. But you got my point, Mark. Do you think white people are gullible? I think this is a huge problem on, on a global scale that I think can be addressed. Hey, look, Mark, you have a responsibility to your people, and I do mean your people, to not spread these news stories. White people can't handle it. Their brains are filled with mayonnaise and putty and American cheese. And I want to let you in on a little something. Not exactly a demon. I'm what in uh, Islamic terminology is called shaitan. (laughs) So same general principle, but Islamic. (laughs) Now, I would like to bring a white child on the stage to sacrifice to Almighty Allah. (laughs) Wallah, Akbar. Hello. Uh, hello. This is uh, Barack Obama. Oh, well, this is the British spying place. Uh, British spying place. Great to talk with you again. I'm going to have the usual, uh, which is a wiretap on some white people. Right out, governor. I'm going to need a wiretap on Donald Trump and right. every white person making above $100,000 a year in the panhandle, or as we call it, Malik Shabazz Allah. <laughs> hey, Michael, special message from Barack Obama. I'm having a motherfucking nervous breakdown. It Can did... you spare $2 or we're going to swap us with ads? It's like, I don't know. I thought you were hanging out with Richard Branson. You look fine to me. Dear Michael, we just had an amazing legislative victory, but now I fear the forces of darkness are closing in on us. <laughs> can you spare us $3 to put up a new ad on CNN so we can bilk you for more money in the future? I'll Bill, say something. Come on. <laughs> come on, you old cracker. <laughs> Come on, you old pasty devil. <laughs> Look at them. They're down there noshing with the Jews. It makes me sick. <laughs> Things I do for the bigger game plan. Come on. Come on, Whitey. It was the night before Christmas when through the White House, not a creature was stirring, but the ghost uh, of Millhouse. The senior staff nestled, all snug in their beds. Dreams of a politically correct Christmas danced in their heads. I put on my robe and donned my skull cap to check one last time on my Santa Claus trap. 
When in the north lawn there arose such a clatter, and I knew it one man, no one thinner or fatter. Michelle's cookies and milk must have done the trick. So I had finally captured dear old Nick. He came to his senses, and I walked up to his cage, and he bellowed and rattled and shook with great rage. Tell me the meaning of this Christmas night ploy. Do you wish to rob the children of their God-given toys? I replied to him calmly, uh, let me be clear. No harm will come to you or your flying reindeer. I know you have millions of presents to give, but Christmas has become much too uh, offensive. So now I told uh, old Kringle how the world is today and how it's no more Merry Christmas, it's Happy Holiday. How being PC means no religious expression and how each candy cane is a microaggression. He stroked his long beard and sat in a deep silence as I told him how Christians must atone for their violence. When I finished, he made not a movement or a steer, and I saw no expression through his thick facial fur. When suddenly he jumped, gee golly, you're right. Who knew it was so wrong to be Christian and white? We must fix this terrible holiday misfortune. What we need is a plan B, a Christmas abortion. PC virtues prevailed, our causes aligned, and I offered to join him to lead from behind. We rode off on his sleigh, worked all the way through the night to end once and for all this Christmas day plight. We took Nick's presents, left Christmas trees bare, and replaced Christmas carols with quotes from Voltaire. We changed a manger scene into a public safe spaces and removed all cheer from coffee shop places. By the end, I was tired, sore, and frostbitten, but a Christmas story was finally rewritten. With our work done, I cannot wait to see all the children wake up with Christmasless glee. I bid sweet farewell, my social justice ally, and with that he took off, vanished into the sky. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. A couple years ago, more relevant in the real proper founding of right-wing Mandela, we heard a clip of Rick Santorum claim that fighting Obamacare was the moral equivalent of what Mandela was doing in fighting apartheid. And I sat there and I went, Rick is quite right. And ever since then, it's been a character. In Santorum's mind, Mandela comes out and he's like, of all of the injustices in the world, that could remind me of the struggle against apartheid. The delivery of health care <laughs> through a private market mechanism. <laughs> None could face the same level of injustice and tyranny <laughs> that Americans face by having an inconvenient website <laughs> so that they are covered in a catastrophic situation. You should fight this. But Sam, I am troubled by a lack of seriousness in the GOP field that I see. Really? All of these candidates are true patriots who clearly would like to save America from the destructive liberal socialist tendencies of President Obama. However, I see a lack of seriousness when it comes to foreign policy and family values that is lacking in the field. Really? What is it that you uh, feel is lacking specifically? I think, as I say, a, a measure of seriousness when it came to foreign policy and a willingness to confront the Islamic threat. See, many people don't recognize, Sam, that there is evil in the world. <laughs> no, I think people, yeah, I think that's probably And I think true. if you look at my you don't think that the Republican experience set and skills that I bring to the table, as so I wait continue... Wait a second, are you suggesting that uh, you, right-wing Nelson Mandela, are going to run for the Republican primary nomination? I know that liberal hosts like to interrupt and be disrespectful, <laughs> and I will be painted into a corner. Comments I made about Buju Banton being correct about gay people will be distorted. All sorts of things will come my way. But I have received a message from God. <laughs> Saying that I must run. So God so is. So it is today that I am announcing later <laughs> that I will formally create an exploratory committee <laughs> to see if a run could be what this country needs to save it from creeping socialism. Wow. An open border and terrorists at our front door who do no longer believe in American strength. It is breaking news. Right-wing Nelson Mandela has announced that later today he will announce that he's going to announce 
An exploratory committee. An exploratory, that is correct. Got the music. Mandela show. Okay, we need to address this. I never lie to the audience. This isn't fake news. It's not the global emoji news. It's real news. I don't lie to you. Last week was a setback. And I say it that way for a reason. Because Mike Sonovich, who's a total freelancer, he's a loser, talks about the guerrilla mindset. I was in the guerrilla mindset when he couldn't even do date rape years ago. He's a man, Rachel. He has priorities. You, they take your kids away. You go, boo I need social security. I'm so upset. Alex, he comes up with a new fucking plan. He tells the audience, he goes, listen to me, you freaking rube. Guess what I just found out? I just found out a plan B better than plan A. Kids. Come on, Billy. Let's go throw it Racism, conspiracy theories, sexism, irrational thinking, internet scams, and fake water and supplement products are only for the general public. But Andy, serious question. You're a comedian. You make a living telling jokes, as do many others of your tribe. But now there are college students who don't like fag and tranny jokes anymore. Not to mention great airplane humor as practiced by Jerry Seinfeld, the funniest man in the history of humanity. And I do mean man because, of course, having a woman do a comedy is like having them drive. Bad results. So, in addition to your love of Islam, why do you want politically correctness to choke comedy? Cock of the Week and James Damod is going to be joining us to talk about why girls can't code, but they do love trigger warnings. Now, there has been many stories in the vicious, lying, left-wing press, Media Matters, George Soros, about my driver's license and what has happened with it or not. It's all a lie, but I am in a driving course to reestate my driving license, even though why I lost my driving's license is all a lie. It's Media Matters, David Brock, and other liars. So you're in this driving course to learn how to drive safely. And of course, it is, it is me. I'm surrounded by a bunch of fucking Dominicans. I wonder why they're in the safety driving course. And we're sitting around, and they're going to show us a fucking video of people crashing into each other and limbs flying and babies getting crashed and all the rest so that you don't drive like Ted Kennedy. And then this instructor on a government pension Totally disinterested, no discipline of the market in her job. And obviously, pushing 60 lesbian, looking forward to retire, no doubt, in Cape Cod, goes, this video footage is upsetting. So I need to give you a trigger warning. I thought, I'm not in a fucking bisexual studies class in college. This is driving school for me and the Dominicans. She goes, trigger warning in that context. Boom. Boom. It took me entirely out of the learning environment. I was so upset that I could not sit and focus for the entire time. All the rest of it was lost upon me. The point of this story is to cue up James Damore, who of course was thought suppressed at Google for proving scientifically that if you get a period that functionally you are mentally retarded for at least two weeks of every month that's not sexist it's science but it also is to go to say that you might be reading some reports in media matters in the coming weeks that my license has not been reinstated it's a complete lie however i do need to take that course again and now to take us out we'll be right back with the cock of the week is hell to the king's by Avenged Sevenfold. Great fucking song. Don't get triggered. The Keystone XL pipeline will provide literally thousands of jobs <laughs> while rewarding our strategic allies, including Canada, in a time when President Obama has gone on an epic apology tour, undermining our security <laughs> and power. Nothing could be better than rewarding the workers of America, our allies, and fighting terrorism and Russia than by approving the Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> Let's do this promptly. It makes sense for America. It makes sense for our security. Let's sign this bill. <laughs> do it, President Obama. First of all, I don't know if the exaggeration is correct, but uh, Jerry Seinfeld, doesn't, he doesn't even play colleges. 
That's yes, because he has been run out by the children. But look, Andy, no. getting on to the other topics, I think I think we all know what's going on right now. If an Islamic terrorist, a member of an Islamic right. group, a terrorist, a Muslim, a terrorist who is practicing Islam by observing their true faith, by being a terrorist, if they were no, to... No, well, that's not the truth. Okay, all right. Okay, well, then, well, we... we I'll we let stip- that slide. Yeah, let it slide for now. We will stipulate it before you defend your favorite religion <laughs> in the world. One thing that I will say for Fidel is that he was not a cock. Very unusual for a leftist. As a matter of fact, he was the one in Cuba doing the cucking. He told me that if you were a revolutionary leader, you could grab girls by the whatever. Then he told me that he is automatically attracted to beautiful peasant girls. So he was an interesting guy. He used to wash his mouth out with rum because he automatically started kissing collectivists. I'm sorry. What is your name, sir? Uh, hello, this this is John Miller. John Miller. Okay. Yes, I'm speaking. Out. Things are going so great for for him right now, so he does not have time to speak. For Nelson for all Mandela. Of the yes, this well, is correct. I mean, okay. I'm someone who's worked in many African political parties. I think he likes me. I think he trusts me. So I'm just going to be sort of handling some of this. So you're his what? You're his spokesperson. Yeah, his spokesperson, so to speak. And, you know, you can see all these things because there's so much press. You know, they say he wants to get back together with Winnie. say he wants to get back together with Winnie. He has no interest in getting back together with Winnie. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be with Winnie at all. I mean, it's a complete lie. But they just they do these things, and he says, you know, even if they say he wants to get back with Winnie, it's still good press. Right. It's okay. amazing. Well, uh, so you're so wait. I'm sorry. Uh, so you're suggesting? Uh, I'm sorry. You said your name was John Miller. This is John Miller. And uh, so you're suggesting you seem to have a real intimate working knowledge of Nelson Mandela's thoughts. I mean, about fairly intimate things. Well, as I say, I mean, I think he trusts me. I think I'm someone who he likes. I think I'm someone who he trusts. This sort of thing. And, you know, everything is so complicated right now. You know, they're reporting in the press that he wants to date Ariana Grande. Meanwhile, she is DMing him on Instagram, and he is not interested. He could be not more or less, no, no interest. None. <laughs> So if I understand what you're saying correctly. He doesn't want to date Ariana Grande. Look, Sam, I feel like you've been very dismissive of the Bernie or Bust crowd. And you haven't taken seriously the numerous voter allegations of fraud and the Associated Press colluding with my wife's campaign. Now, you got to understand something here. It's Mm -hmm. crucial. There are over 30 FBI agents investigating my wife right now. You don't think that doesn't end up in an indictment? I, it, She's going to lose to Trump. <laughs> Shillery, release the transcript. <laughs> it is odd that uh, that Bill Clinton would be a Bernie or Buster. I think well, people I, are surprised to hear that. I mean, if she couldn't satisfy me, could she satisfy the country? <laughs> Hashtag Bernie or Bust. <laughs> I mean, look, look. It's just odd. You know, the thing is, you say, vote for the lesser two evils. Well, guess what? I don't want to vote for evil any more i see <laughs> and the other thing about it is see 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 here's the deal with hillary you know what you're getting she's a war criminal <laughs> she's in the pockets of the banks mm-hmm. she dines with lord blank fine every day and he's a very nasty disgusting little man <laughs> he actually makes donald trump look quite handsome if wow. we're keeping it a hundred Look, so, wow, there's if a lot we're being of honest, people have been honest. using that phrase today. It's yeah, weird. It's going around. It's traveling around the ether. I guess so. It's Stop out interrupting my flow. Go ahead. So you know we're getting with her. Right. right? Are we right? Well. War, um, kill Arabs, take money from the banks. That's what we get with Hillary. Right. Donald Trump, we don't know. We don't know. It could be better. We don't know. He could be better. He could. The revolution could happen and he's good on tpp so i look at all that and i say to myself i don't want well, to hillary has come out for tpp i mean she it's, it's been a position do change, you believe but... a word that my wife says <laughs> well she is a liar 
I mean, she's the greatest liar in the history of American politics. Well, what am I supposed to do? Shillery. Okay. Hashtag Shillery. All right. Release I appreciate the phone call. The Wall Street transcripts. And I've respected the majority report in the past, I... but you're not covering rampant voter fraud, California. There's at least 10 million Bernie voters. They're not being reported. He's actually won this thing by a landslide. And when the FBI indicts, you're going to regret it. Okay. She said she would murder my entire family if I didn't marry her at Yale. <laughs> Kidnap my mother. It's Bernie, Bernie bro. or bust. Yeah. Bernie or bust, uh, Bill Clinton, was actually in the media tent uh, after the vote yesterday. He was very upset. Yeah, I, I, heard, I heard also that he, his, the theory was that, what y'all don't understand is that Donald Trump is not a plant for us. Hillary is a plant for Donald Trump. I also don't think that you should be having uh, an affair with a 22-year-old. Uh, girl, if you're the president uh, of the United States. Oh, I don't know. I don't knock until you try it. I guess you won't be able to try either, loser. I remember meeting Pablo Escobar in 1980. He was an enterprising and energetic young Colombian with a visionary plan using non-traditional revenue streams to help his country and make a healthy profit for himself. I saw an opportunity for us to work together in ways that could benefit Arkansas and Hillary and I's future political plans. Pablo was an energetic, engaging, and friendly man, but I sure did feel bad for whoever got on the wrong side of him. But at this point, I also felt bad for whoever got on the wrong side of Hillary and I. Hillary had a certain instinct for blood, a certain willingness to get dirt done, in her words. I remember one time when a couple of young boys had seen us unloading a shipment of pure Colombian cocaine from the Mena airport. They were out having a evening as young boys do in Arkansas, drinking beer on the train tracks, dodging a curfew, and out doing what young men are supposed to do, but they had seen too much. Hi, uh, this is Bill Clinton. Yup, I did go to the Trump winery, and I still go when my fucking wife isn't in the house complaining about Russia hacking the election. God, I hate her things would have been much worse with her. Give Trump a chance. We need to align with him to defeat the deep state. Bernie would have won. That sign <laughs> says Black Lives Matter. And let me tell you something. I've no one's hugged more colored, but I have hugged more little precious black babies in the Dominican Republic than you have ever even seen. First, you're going to eventually kill some people. You know it. I know it. The American people know it. But after you do, it's imperative now. You drag the body to the park. It's the only way it works. They know about the deal I got, that deal I got with Pablo Escobar up there in Medellin. And what we're going to do is we're going to get them involved in that raid on the religious cult and take them all out. And then we're going to drag their bodies Wait a second. to the park. <laughs> I'm literally drunk with power. Hi, this is Bill Clinton with a special breaking announcement that I hope that WikiLeaks will contact me over. I'm releasing this information at great personal danger because we all know of my wife's penchant for murder, revenge, and general bloodlust. But I have no choice but to warn the American people that my wife and several other extremely mentally ill and dangerous people such as Peter Dow have gotten together and released a pathetic new website and book, and they're thinking about getting the band back together for 2020. I hope Julian Assange or Alex Jones or someone inside the Trump White House hears this message before the deep state and or my wife gets to me. In excerpt, which I am releasing to you now from my wife's horrifying, turgid, and war crimes apologetic new book. She says the following about Bernie Sanders, who, of course, as we all know, would have won. Jake Sullivan, my top policy advisor, told him and reminded him of a scene from the 1990 movie There's Something About Mary. A deranged hitchhiker says he's come up with a brilliant plan. Instead of a, the famous eight-minute abs exercise routine, he's going to market seven-minute abs. It's the same, just quicker. Then the driver Played by Ben Stiller says, well, why not six-minute abs? And that's what it's like in a debate with Bernie. We would propose an infrastructure investment or an ambitious new apprenticeship program for young people, and then Bernie would announce basically the same thing, but 
bigger. I can personally tell you that Hillary has never supported any kind of ab workout program at all. Neither have I, and we've been together for decades. It's a complete lie. Bernie Sanders was right about every single policy proposal. And my wife's policy shop, in between engaging in various war crimes and stealing the primary from Bernie, the best they could do was come up with a reach from an overrated late 90s comedy to throw a noble socialist under the bus. Now, I need this recording release before she comes home. I am in danger. If Julian Assange could contact me through a secret channel at the Ecuadorian embassy, we can save America and the world from 2020. She's coming again. She never rests. Oh, fuck. That's her. Bernie would have won. Now, there's another group of people that have arisen around her that respond to her in a cult-like way, and she can do no wrong. And, you know, it's that's like the Bernie or Bust bill. I was just like, well, maybe if you voted for fucking Tulsi Gabbard, we could have a revolution. I love Tulsi Gabbard. Did you see her in that bikini? And she was surfing, and everybody supports fucking corruption except for fucking Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> so maybe if you weren't smearing fucking Tulsi Gabbard, she could be the fucking president. What are you talking about? Yeah, I didn't what, implicate everybody. I'm a grandfather. <laughs> I'm a vegan. No one had more progressive accomplishments than me. I'm a vegan grandfather. I'm a vegan grandfather. I never did a goddamn thing. I have a couple of different options here. I could pivot away from the question, not undermine my wife's campaign, or I could back TPP and go in a long, meandering answer. <laughs> that will reinforce corporate tax cuts and loopholes. I'm going to go with B. He is not helpful to her at all. He has always been a better surrogate for anybody other than Hillary Clinton. Yeah, weird that. I mean, he was incredible for Obama in 2012, regardless of what you think of him. But he overall, he had that one moment where he was like, private equity is great. Mitt Romney's an amazing guy. Oh, Oh right. There was also actually that it's not good where he went up to uh, Paul Ryan behind uh, you know in like oh, the yeah. wings of a thing. He's like we should talk about how we can gut Medicare. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm paraphrasing. We need to get together on this. Um, I, uh, you want a veggie wrap? Of course. But thank God he's got that brain power stuff that he's taking every day. Um, he's taking too much brain power. We can't get our sights <laughs> on him. <laughs> Gotta figure this out. He's starting too he, much. He won't stand too still. <laughs> Hillary. He's out thinking us. We got to right. put some arsenic in his brain power. We got to wait. It's already there. First, I have a date with them, and then Hillary destroys them. That's how it works. That's the process. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. I don't. I'm trying. To, I'm just like I'm trying to. Is Jennifer Flowers really going to be at the debate? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm not sure how to process that. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Where's uh, that Becky Quick that I was talking to last week? She was a sharp one. Look, if somebody said, hey, it's because of Hillary Clinton <laughs> that Bill Clinton's on that plane. She told yes, me. I agree. She forced me. I didn't want she to be. She buys all my plane tickets. She buys. She said, you get on that. I said, those girls look just, mighty young. And she said, you get on that plane actually, or I'll kill you just this is like interesting, I did Vince Foster. I think this brings up an interesting <laughs> distinction, right? First of all, give me a break. Hey, Matt, I'm better than you. Oh, look at that. I'm better than you. I'm better than everyone. You know, 30 years ago, no one would have ever thought that there would be a black president. Look at how far we have fallen. 30 years ago, I used to have my own section at a counter and not have to be forced to be integrated. Look at how far. I'm confusing the timelines. Liberals that love to point out timelines because they're elitists. <laughs> Ben Carson, he's pushing that break where it's like, what more can I do with that character <laughs> that he's not doing himself? I do know the name of my primary foreign policy advisor, as you well know. Uh, it's one, it's a close relative of mine, and I'm not going to release his name because I know what you people do to people like that. You destroy him. Mm -hmm. My relative is a former CIA officer. He's the president of Princeton. He speaks Chinese and uh, Japanese Chinese, also Korean, and knows all of the Middle East. And he's my primary advisor. He's advised me since grammar school on foreign policy. 
And another question I'm wondering is why is it that ISIS is so complicated? <laughs> I mean, you got Al Qaeda, you got ISIS. Why don't they just become one thing? What do I think when I think smarter? Jews. What do I think when I think of Jews? Israel. Israel good. Everybody likes Israel. <laughs> Great solution. Okay, speak slow. All right. Up yours, George. Trying to catch me off guard. I will kill you. It reminds me of the time that I told a robber at a chicken place to go to the counter. I was like, give me a break. Why do you want my wallet when you could rob the whole store? That was cash money. Why are you driving away with my car? Give me a break. Why are you driving away with my car? Give that me, belt buckle me, stops knives too easily. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. You obviously know I wasn't going to kill you. You have a belt buckle on. Uh, I could clarify what the events of the evening according to my own internal intelligence on a variety of grounds and, and disseminate that information to you if you would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. See, I, you wear, I wear um, women's underwear, uh, personally. Uh, there's, there's nothing, uh, you know, the liberal media will try to distort that, but I find it more... <laughs> Uh, uh, why, soft why, why would anyone try and distort that? Well, that's what you do. That's what you do. That's, I mean, I don't know if you've read Mein Kampf, but I think we can see this. But I go to the uh, Victoria's Secret uh, fall line because of the softness of the fabric. And uh, Armstrong Williams usually has them sent to me in the mail, uh, but not over the weekend of the Caucasus. So I need to fly back uh, to Florida to get a pantyhose in preparation for New Hampshire. But the cruise campaign has distorted that in a dirty trick. And I would have, in fact, won New Hampshire and then become president through popular uh, proclamation, actually months before general election voting would have taken place. I would have already defeated President Obama, although I do look forward <laughs> to debating him. You know you're not running against President Obama. Yeah, look, look I mean, <laughs> see, I, I know the liberal media tries to distort that. You have your facts, I have mine. When I debate President Obama, as I said earlier, we're going to have some very tight rules, where as an example, he's going to have to say yes to each of the questions I present him with, such as, are you a Muslim? And he would be able to say yes, or that's correct. Uh, or he could respond in the affirmative in Arabic or Swahili. In my view, having a bubble bath with Armstrong Williams done for the country, <laughs> see, listen to that, done for the country, is a very Christian behavior. And the liberal media, see, they're going to go run with that. Oh, you take bubble baths with Armstrong Williams when we're trying to politics save the country. It's the politics of personal, personal destruction. destruction. Well, I would go to Israel and rave at the wheel, and then we could get rid of the Bill of Rice. And then we could promote to people based off of their ethnic heritage. That would make a lot more sense. So on one hand, you go to Israel, and they have this thing called the Knesset, which is very complicated. They have many parties, and it makes no sense, and they should just have two like us. I went there, and I told them that. On the other hand, we have this thing called the Bill of Rights, which uh, interferes with our ability to racially profile people at airports. And if we could just get rid of them, then we would have the opportunity to screen people from the country more effectively. So you might say, are you a terrorist? And then while they're answering, you could just be like, psych, it doesn't matter what the answer is. And then you are carrying a Syrian man blindfolded as he gets <laughs> dragged off into a secret uh, prison where he'll spend the rest of his life. So that's the policy that... I would advocate. I mean, well, you can infer what you you can infer what you want to infer, but I think people are tired of the games that are being played, and I'm not going to let these games be played anymore. When I reverse dunked on Walt Chamberlain, that was the truth of Walt? my story. And if you want to look him up, uh, Walt then, Chamberlain, don't do yes, you really Walt need Chamberlain was a cousin of mine <laughs> who is deceased. And he taught Wilt Chamberlain how to play basketball. I mean, look, I'm, an, I'm not an archaeologist. I am a pretty bright person. But even I found the process entirely overwhelming. Being president is easy and straightforward. Running for president is near impossible because of the <laughs> Alinskyite tactics that are deployed by the media and others involved in uh, the process. Donald Trump, uh, on another note, is a very thoughtful person. <laughs> he had people 
He was. I was. I was at a rally for him, and he he told his supporters to remove the noose from around my neck, <laughs> and that's an example of the type of can-do <laughs> leadership that he embodies and will bring to the nation. Uh, Facebook is- memes in our textbooks. Instead of textbooks. She wasn't properly vetted. Everyone, check out her sex tape. <laughs> it was a time when I needed to try to murder my friends. Where I would threaten to kill my mother. But then I realized it's not really possible. I actually also love, because again, I'm not, you know, this isn't even at a certain point you can't even knock Carson because of whatever the hell is going on with him. But I also like what he's basically saying. He's like, I used to be an impulsive, reactive, deranged person, like Donald Trump, who I think should be president. But now I realize that that's the way of really ineffectively acting that makes you susceptible to manip- manipulated by other people. Yes, I think he should be president. I get so offended every time I go to the polling place and I don't pay my poll tax. <laughs> I work so hard at medical school, and I think uh, people get upset when you say poll tax, but I'm saying it. Also, a literacy test as well. I thought he was going to say, I always have no involvement. <laughs> there are reports that said that I wasn't involved in things in HUD. I'm always uninvolved in things that I run. I'm uninvolved in life. Candy's my wife of decades. I barely know her. She's just some weird bag lady that asks for furniture. And sometimes I get advice about furniture from. I don't know anybody. Next question. I've kind of got some things to do, like make people homeless. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.